In the Old Testament, I'm going to be in the book of Ezekiel. I think Ezekiel's very profitable to us as Christians today. It's kind of one of these things where I realized I've, I've been in church most of my entire life. And uh, yes, entire, in church my entire life. I was taken to church as a little bitty fella. My mom saw fit to make sure I was there. And I can tell you some stories and tell you more about that, but I probably shouldn't. But at any rate, um, I've been in church my entire life. And I went to Bible college and I've been around the things of God. And I realized that I was was real weak in the prophets. I don't know if you guys have ever gotten to that point. Uh, usually when I'm reading the prophets, I'm just reading through. I'm not really really focused in on what's said because a lot of times the reading gets in the way of the message. Has that happened to you all? Maybe not, but for me, I'm too busy trying to read it and get through it as opposed to really uh, meditating on the Word. So I realized something. But as I've read through the book of Ezekiel and ran into a few things, I noticed there's some stuff in Ezekiel that is so important to every Christian today. So this morning or this evening, tonight I would like for you to say, live like a prophet. Not necessarily tiling this message, but the things that God gave Ezekiel to share with the children of Israel, you and I tonight could take what he did for them into a lost world today and into a world that would be encouraging to other Christians. So grab your Bible uh, Ezekiel chapter number 2. I'm going to be all the way over in verse number 1. Let me back up here. All right. 2 verse 1. In chapter 2 it says, and the Bible says, And he said unto me, Son of man, stand upon thy feet, and I will show unto thee. I will un uh, speak unto thee. And the Spirit entered into me, and then I spoke unto me, and I was set upon my feet, that I heard him that spake unto me. And he said unto me, Son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel to a rebellious nation that hath rebelled against me, and, and their uh, fathers have transgressed against me, even unto this very day. For they are impudent children, stiff-hearted. I do send thee unto them, and thou shalt say unto them, Thus said the Lord God. And they, whether they will hear, or whether they will, whether they will forbear, they, for they are a rebellious house, yet shall know that, that there hath been a prophet among them. And thou, son of man, be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words, though briars and thorns be with thee, and thou dost well among scorpions. Be not afraid of their words, nor dismayed at their looks, though they are a rebellious house. And thou shalt speak my words unto them, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, Forbear, for they are most rebellious. But son of man, hear what I say unto thee. Be not thou rebellious like the rebellious house. Open thy mouth and eat that I give thee. And when I looked, behold, a hand was set upon uh, unto me, and lo, a roll of a book was therein. And he spread it before me, and it was written within and without, and there was written therein lamentations and mourning and woe. Let us pray. Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for letting us be here tonight, Lord. I'm so grateful to be in your house. I don't take the situation lightly, Lord. I ask you to let me be your man for a little while. Give your people something, Lord, that can help them grow and help them go out of here and, and live more close to you, Lord. Lord, I know if your people get help, you'll get the glory. And that's what we want to do tonight. Lord, give you all the glory and praise. Your Son, Jesus, most precious name we ask. Amen. The book of Ezekiel is kind of an interesting prophet to me. I, I love reading about Ezekiel and I love the way the Lord had saw fit by the Holy Spirit to tell us Ezekiel's story. It's his life and the life of his is what we can glean out of this thing is kind of really important to every Christian to truly understand. Now I may have said this once before but you can go out into the world today and you'll hear some of these religious crowds or these religious 
leaders, and I hate to really even call them preachers because they're really not, but at any rate, not throwing rocks tonight, I'm just saying, if they come and say the Old Testament has not apply, be very weary of that because you don't really have the New Testament without the Old Testament. It just doesn't work that way. And God saw fit to put the Old Testament and the New Testament in this here Bible right here, and there's no reason to worry or fret that the Old Testament's there. It's still profitable to us. But notice Ezekiel's name and what it means. It means strengthened by God. God. He grew up in Jerusalem and was trained to be of the household of leadership in the church. I would venture to say, and I think it was true, that Ezekiel would have been a, a priest in the temple. So at this particular time in his life, they were taken off into the captivity. The Chaldeans had taken him. He was in Babylon. And he had begun to um, be there for this many days. He'd been there. And God comes and calls him to be a spokesman for him to go and tell the children of Israel. Where the children of Israel at this particular time, they were very rebellious and still rebellious. They had been in captivity for some time and they still wasn't really forbearing to what the Lord had told them. The children of Israel in times past had plenty of doctrine. They had the Moses law. They had the understanding. And yet they were very rebellious and kept turning their back on God. They really did. As a Christian, you and I have a task to fulfill. We truly do. In Matthew chapter 28, verse number 18, the Bible tells us there, and this is Jesus speaking, speaking out of his own mouth when he was walking among us in the flesh here. It says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore, teaching all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end. So tonight as we're considering what Jesus has told us here and some of the facts that are written to us in the book of Ezekiel, tonight I'll give you six actions of a true Christian how can live a profitable, profitable Christian life. And these are actions, so it's something that you have to do. Well, the very first one I'd like for you to see is the fact that we as Christians tonight, we need to stand. In verse number 1, it tells us, Son of man, stand upon thy feet. You and I as a Christian living in this world today that we live in a lost and a dying world with people living in sin, even with people that are saved are still cluttered up in sin and sinful lives. You and I as Christians, we are compelled. We truly need to take a stand for the Lord. We truly do. In Daniel chapter 1, verse number 8, But Daniel posed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine that he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuch that he may not defile himself. You remember David when he was... Um, you remember Daniel when he was in captivity there in Nebuchadnezzar's household. Um, they was wanting to bring the king's meat to fatten the Hebrew boys up. And the, and the Hebrew boys did not want to defile themselves with the king's meat. If you think about that, what mighty stand that was for Daniel to take a stand for the Lord. He was standing for something that he knew in his heart was true. He understood what God expected of him. He understood what God's commandments was. He was a man that wanted to please the Lord and Daniel took a stand. You and I tonight would do well as a Christian to take a stand on a daily basis. You might say, Brother Walker, but I do take a stand. Well, good. Keep taking a stand. I hope tonight this will encourage you. The Apostle Paul wrote to us in Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 11. It says, Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Well, you and I, there's that word stand again. There's many things that you and I have to do as a Christian, and number one is to stand. We have to stand against the evil. We have to stand on God's side. We have to stand with Jesus. Not that He needs defending, but we should defend Him at all costs because we should be taking a stand for Him. He's done so much for us. He's blessed us. He's saved our wretched souls. We need to take a stand for Him. Same chapter of Ephesians that Paul had wrote in verse 13, it says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, not just a little bit of it, the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand the evil day, and hath done all to stand. 
Paul was telling the Ephesians that they need to do everything that it takes that's possible for them to stand. For them to stand for what is right. It truly does. The Apostle Paul wrote to the folks there in Galatians, Galatians chapter 5 verse 1, it says, Stand ye therefore, stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. If you and I are taking a stand for what God has done us, we won't be looking back into the world that we lived before we were saved. We won't be getting entangled in the things that happened in the past. You and I will be looking forward. It's amazing to me how many times the Lord has done all these wonderful things to me, and a lot of times when things don't go my way, I start getting caught up in the things and the mistakes I've done in the past. Well, if I'm taking a stand for God, I don't have to worry about these things behind me. I need to be looking forward. Honestly, I do. We either stand with Him or not. You ever think about that? The, the Bible tells us we're either with Him or we're not. So are we standing with Him or are we standing with the world? You and I as a Christian, we have a call to stand with Christ. We have a call to stand for what is good and pure and holy. We have a call to stand for that. In Matthew chapter 12, verse number 30, the Lord tells us, He hath not with me is against me, and that he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. You know, you and I tonight, we would really do good to be a gatherer, not a scatterer. True, true enough. We really would do real good to be a gatherer, not a, a scatterer. One day we'll stand before Christ. We'll stand before Christ and we'll have to answer for the things that we've done. And 2 Corinthians chapter number 5 verse 10 tells us, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. I'd like to be standing for the good things I've done as opposed to the bad things I've done. One of these days I know I honestly feel in my heart I'll be embarrassed about some of the things that I didn't do. The things that I should have done, that I wished I'd have done, that I probably just hadn't got to or taken the time. I'll be embarrassed by those things. Then I'll certainly be embarrassed by the things that I have done that was against what God's will was for me and what God would wanted and what it would have been for me to do to make Him happy and, and pleased by me. Number one was stand. Number two, look with me in verse one. Number two is listen. Stand upon thy feet and I will speak unto thee. You know, when God speaks, you and I would do well to listen. We truly would. There's a lot of Christians today, they don't really seem to want to listen when God speaks. They really don't. Second Samuel chapter 22 verse number 14 tells us, The Lord thundereth from the heavens and that most high uttered his voice. When God spoke, Elijah listened. Yes, it was a still small voice and when he spoke to Elisha, but Elijah, but Elijah listened when God spoke. You and I do well of that. In 1 Kings, here's where Elijah got spoke to by God directly. Verse 19, uh, chapter 19, verse 12 in, King, in 1 Kings. And, the, and after the earthquake... A fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. You know, sometimes God needs to get our attention. I was, remember I was talking to someone last week, I believe it was. You know, the times that God has said something to me, you know, you would say that to people and people think sometimes you've lost your marbles or whatever and, and they really feel that way in their heart. But I know when God speaks to me, there's no mistake in who's talking and what He's saying because He always makes it clear. And I will admit, it's never an audible voice, but I hear it all throughout my body. If someone was ever around and I said, God just said something to me, they would have said, I didn't hear a thing. And I'd say, I sure did, amen. I heard it. A still, small voice. But the voices that the, the Lord uses to get my attention, it sounds just like my earthly father, so far down, deep in my soul, that there's no mistaking it was the Lord. 
sound just like my father, and he used in a language that I only still understand from my father, because my father had a way of saying things that wasn't always something that corrected me, but it was something to make me know whatever I was doing, I was doing it wrong, and that's how God speaks to me. But you and I would do very well when God speaks, we should listen. Whether it's like that or a still small voice, every Christian should be listening when God speaks tonight. In Psalms chapter eight, uh, 68, verse number 33, the Bible tells us, To him that rideth upon the heavens, heavens of heavens, which are of old, lo, doth he send out his voice, that a mighty voice, uh, send out his voice, that a mighty voice. When he speaks, he speaks in a mighty voice. You ever think about that? Just like I told you when the Lord speaks to me, there's no mistake in what he just said. There's no misunderstanding at all exactly what the Lord had and said to me. Now here's something, my next point is, when the Lord spoke to me, I had the call to listen, and I heard him, but did I hear him? You and I tonight, number three is hear. When the Lord speaks, you and I would do very well to hear what he says. And when you hear what someone says, you take what is said and it's thought about, and you remember what is said, and you take action on what is said. If you hear it, you're going to take action on it. In Ezekiel chapter 2, verse number 2, the Bible tells us, And the Spirit entered into me, and spoke unto me, and set me upon my feet, that I heard him that spake unto me. Now Ezekiel, when the Lord got a hold of him and talked to him, Ezekiel heard the whole story, got his attention, took the time, and he listened. You know, a lot of times in life when you meet and talk to people and, you know, when you're around a lot of people sometimes, you don't always hear what they're saying. But when God speaks, you and I have to take a minute, have to take the time to understand what He's saying. We have to hear. Like I've said once before, the Lord gave us one mouth and two ears. We really need to listen and we need to hear what the Lord's saying. We truly do. As a Christian, we got to hear what God has for us. In John chapter 10, verse number 27, the Lord says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. My sheep hear my voice. You know, Jesus said that out of his own mouth. He said, My sheep hear my voice, they follow me. They know him. That's the thing. You and I. It's important for us to listen because it's one of these things that draws us nigh to Him. Because if we're hearing Him and we're understanding Him, we realize that we're His children. It's important for us to see that fact tonight that we hear His voice. You know, I run to a lot of people all the time and I tell them that God speaks to me and they're just kind of puzzled by that. Well, it's the saddest thing about it is, and I'm really trying hard to tell them, that God could speak to them too. God could truly speak to them. They need to, to come to know who the Lord is. They need to have that relationship with God where God is speaking to them. They live a life where they are so far away from God and so vile and wicked and unsafe, truly God will never speak to them. God will still be seeking them, but yes, God's not going to spend time to, to, to speak to them. They have to be around the things and the words of God. Someone needs to sprint, share the gospel with them. If they're never hearing from God truly, God is not speaking to them. It's a sad, sad situation. It truly is. I have a good friend. I worked with him for many years. And, and I had witnessed to him. And he knew my family had this ministry. And he kind of had kept up with us. And he was a really sweet fellow. I liked him a lot. I thought the world of him. I still think the world of him. And he was telling me one night as after his one of his uh, children were born and his children was just, child was just very sick and his wife was in the hospital and they were just getting worse and worse and worse. And he says, he says, I don't know what happened. He said, but I went to the bathroom and I started praying. I said, God, if you're really real, you got to help me here because I'm at the end of my rope. I really need something. He got to the point where he was reaching out for something that he had heard somebody having more about than he did and he was reaching out for God and he got in that bathroom he says I prayed and I cried and I was on my face and then all of a sudden it's just like clear as bell something happened 
And then weeks later, he said, he got to his church and he said, I got saved and I got baptized and all stuff. And I said, brother, I can tell you what happened real quick. Is that night you got down on your knees and you started crying out to God for help. God realized that you realized you needed him and you realized you needed to be humble enough to come to him for help. When you ask him to help you, guess what he did? He helped you. You got saved right there, brother. God started making a change right there in your life is what I tried to tell him and explain it to him. And that's truly what happened. God turned him around right there. So after that time, he starts hearing the words, the words of the Lord. The Lord can speak to him then for sure. Amen goes there. Why should we hear from the Lord? Why should we listen when he's talking? Because he is our guide. You know, it would be a sad life to go through life without Jesus Christ in my heart. It would be a sad life for me to know there was nothing out after there when I were to pass away and be gone. There's nothing left for me. That would be a sad life. I would just be... I don't know what I would do without God. I don't know what people do without God. They don't know how good He is to them. He don't, they, don't, they don't understand... They, I just I can't even hardly speak about how God has been so good to me, how He takes care of me. God's taken such good care of me. I can't imagine not having His care and love taking care of me. Amen goes there. In John chapter 16, verse number 13 tells us, How be it when He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He will guide you unto all truth. Amen. I want to be guided to all the truth. Sure enough. For He shall not speak of Himself, but whatsoever ye, He shall hear that shall speak. He speak, and He will show you things to come. As a Christian, you and I need to know for sure that God does not want us to be uninformed about the things to come. We should be able to hear what He has to say. We truly should. Now you think about this, the more time we spend in the Bible, the more opportunities the Lord has to speak to us. I run into people all the time that can't quite figure out what God has for them, they can't quite figure out their way, and they're complaining to others about it. But the problem of it is, they only show up for church on like Sunday mornings a lot of times. They don't come back for other things and discipleship and stuff like that. And then they're like, I don't know, the Lord never speaks to me. And they're not reading their Bible. <clears throat> How do you hear from the Lord unless you're reading your Bible? Truly is impossible to hear from God without being in His book. You know, this book I hold in front of me, this King James Bible, has the mind of God, has the spirit of the Lord, the Lord, Lord in it. How do you get through life without it? How do you hear anything from the Lord at all without this book? Amen. Number four tonight, our action is go. In verse 13, uh, Ezekiel tells us here, And he said unto me, Son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation that hath rebelled against me. As a Christian, you and I tonight are charged with a great commission. We truly are. What God did for uh, Ezekiel in his time is the same things that God should be doing in our hearts today. We should be going and doing the work of the great commission for the king. We truly should. We need to go and get busy with the work that God has for us. That's important. We need to be after that, after that work, sure enough. In John chapter 20, verse number 21, it says, And Jesus said to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so I send you. Well, I think tonight you and I, if we really got down to brass tack, you could say the Lord is sending me. The Lord is sending you tomorrow, wherever you go. You need to be mindful that you go bearing the armor of a Christian. You need to be sharing God's message with others. Truly should. Amen goes there. Amen goes there. God expects us to be obedient to the call when He says to go. And when I always think about being obedient and someone getting a call from God and directions, I always think about Abram. Man, it's amazing. In Genesis chapter 12, verse number 1, it says, Now the Lord said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country <clears throat> and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto the land that I will show thee. Amen there. God got a hold of Abram, gave him some direction to tell him to get up and go. I ain't telling you where. I'm not telling you what you're going to go through. I'm not telling you how far you got to go. I'm just telling you to get up and go. And you know what? The miraculous thing is, oh, Abram went too. Nowhere in the book there in Genesis did it say, oh, Abram argued at all. 
Nowhere does it say that Abram said, Are we there yet, Lord? Are we there yet, Lord? Are we there yet? He didn't. He got up and went. He got his feet in, in motion. He, he rid, rode on whatever it was, whether it was a camel or a horse, I don't remember, but he got going. His whole household took him with it, got up out of his father's house. He went into a place he'd never seen before. He was around people in strange lands and strange people that the Lord had sent him. He just went. Now you and I, if we were to think about that, knowing what God did for Abram when God sent him, you and I can rest assured on whatever God sends us to do will be a piece of cake. It truly will. It won't be hard. It won't be difficult. We'll be protected. We'll be walking with God. And if He sends us, we'll be going where He expects us to be. Go is the word, key word tonight for that. Sure enough. If we are truly a Christian, and because we have the Holy Spirit living in us, we should have the heart of Christ. You ever think about that? If we're truly a Christian, knowing we have the Holy Spirit living in us, we should truly have the heart of Christ. Now think about that for a minute. If you truly have the heart of Jesus inside of you, through the Holy Spirit, it should be doing something to your flesh. It should be motivating you to go. Why is that? Well, Jesus said, Jesus looked out and He's seeing these multitude of sick people. He's seeing these lost people. He's seeing these people that had no hope and nothing. He's seeing these people that are going to hell, are going to spend their eternity in a fiery lake of hell. And He was moved with compassion by what He saw. Matthew chapter 9, verse number 33, it tells us what He said. So he turned to His disciples and He said, The harvest is truly plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore for the harvest that the Lord of the harvest, that He will send forth labors into His harvest. We should go because we understand the heart of Christ. We should be motivated by that love that He's given us through the Holy Spirit. Now, if you and I were to be reasonable with ourselves, if you and I were to think of ourselves, no matter how you think of yourself, I'm usually pretty hard on myself a lot of times. There's some things I think I do pretty good at, and there's some things I know I do terrible at. So I'm usually pretty my most critical person. That's usually me. I'm pretty tough on myself. But knowing that I have the Holy Spirit inside of me and what God has given me through the heart of Christ in there, when I go and I speak and I do anything for God, the fact is I can't really mess up. I might not feel like I do a real good job at it, but if He's sending me and giving me something to do, I really can't go wrong. That's the important thing for all of us to know. You really can't go wrong. We need to be motivated. There was multitudes of people living with no hope, no life. You know, we ought, we ought to be willing to move when God tells us to do something. And you say, Brother Walker, are you trying to send me out to be a missionary? Well, guess what? Whether you know it or not, you are a missionary. You're a missionary to wherever you live, you're a missionary. Wherever grocery store you go to, you are a missionary for Christ in that grocery store. You truly are. Wherever you go, we need to go. We need to have Him on the tip of our tongue. Number five tonight is speak. Now, I know a lot of people like speaking. I love talking myself. Uh, sometimes I like listening a little more than I like talking, but we all need to speak. But when we speak... Ezekiel got some special words here from the Lord. Look in verse number 7. The Lord's talking to Ezekiel here, and He says, And thou shalt speak my words unto them. So when you and I are out and about and we're talking to others, we should have the words of Christ in us. We should have those words of love. We should have those words of encouragement. Most importantly of all, we should have Jesus Christ's gospel within us. It literally should spill out and spill over in everywhere and around us as we are going. We are here to tell it. We truly are. We're here to give the gospel of Christ. We're here to speak about the things of God. We're here to have His words in our heart. And we're here to speak them. Speak it tonight. Amen. Jesus Christ and what He's done for you and I should be right on the tip of our tongue. It truly should. I know how the Lord has taken care of me when I was a little fella and I couldn't take care of myself. I know how well He was taking care of me. I realize that today. That's on the tip of my tongue. 
That should be the praise for him. We should be willing to tell and we should tell it. Go tell it. Amen. In Luke chapter 12, verse number 8, it tells us, Also I say unto you, what, Whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. Amen goes there. Now think about that. If you got Jesus Christ in your heart, you got the Holy Spirit living in you, you know what He's done for you, you know how He saved you from this, this fiery lake of hell, you realize what He's done for Him, you have something to say to others. It's important to say it, because if you're not saying it, you're not telling others about Him, you're not confessing Him, He's not going to confess you in front of the God when the time comes. That's true. Amen goes there. It's important for us to speak to tell others about Him. Not only that, His actions speak louder than words. Amen goes there. In James, the half-brother of the Lord wrote in the book of James, it says, James chapter 2, verse number 26, it says, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is also dead. We should have a great testimony. You know, as a Christian, our life should just reflect a great testimony. It truly should. Every aspect of our life, the way you carry yourself, the smile on your face, the love you have in your heart for others, that testimony should just spill out all over the people that you're around. It truly should. Amen goes there. Actions speak louder than words. Amen. Amen goes there. We should be a living sacrifice. You ever think about that? You know, we are called to die to self on a daily basis. Our flesh is dying. Literally, we're one more day closer to dying than we were yesterday. If you ever think about it, you might get hung up on that and you might worry about it. But like I said before, the greatest thing that can happen to you as a Christian tonight is when you pass away because you get to go live with the Father in heaven. Amen. But the fact is, every day we're dying a little more. But the Lord tells us that we need to be living as a living sacrifice. And I know you've heard this before in Romans chapter 12, verse number 1. Paul wrote to the, the church there in Rome. He says, beseech, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Yeah, amen goes there. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. You know, don't ever leave out which is your reasonable service on that verse. If you're going to memorize it, get the whole thing. The Lord's saying this is a reasonable service. He's not asking us to do something that's unreasonable. Not asking us to do something that's hard. We should be a living sacrifice for Him. Our actions, our show of our living sacrifice should be speaking the Lord Jesus Christ. It truly should. Number six tonight, and we'll wrap it up. This is the last one. It's consume God's Word. That's important for all of us. How do you know the mind of God without trying ever to read the love letter that He has written? I'll be honest with you. My wife and I, uh, when we were dating, I was just madly in love with this young lady. I still madly in love with my wife. But I remember when we were first dating how we would talk on the phone for hours. And uh, the more talking we would do and being around one another, the more we got to know each other. We knew each other's, you know, uh, the way she would flick her hair or the way she would walk or the little things she would say and how she would hold her cup and all these things I learned about my wife because I wanted, I was madly in love with her. I wanted to know everything there was to ever know about this young lady. I truly did. But you, when you think about that, you and I won't ever know the love that God has for us. We'll never understand how much He loves us. I know how much I love my wife and, and how I'm so in love with my I truly understand that and how I want to know everything there is about it. You and I should have that same call when it comes to the Lord Jesus Christ and what God has wrote to us in his book here. You and I should have such an excitement to get in the book and start figuring out all these characteristics of God that you and I could live by is truly how we, we need to know the Lord. We need to know him intimately by staying in the book. Amen. Amen goes there. Number six, consume God's words. In verse number 9, it tells us that uh, Ezekiel was here and the Lord was doing some things. It says, And when I looked, behold, a hand was sent unto me. And lo, a roll of the book was therein. We are to consume God's holy word. 
Now this thing that God was doing for Ezekiel, he put the scroll right in front of Ezekiel. And then later on there in chapter, chapter 3, God made Ezekiel consume the scroll. Eat the scroll. You and I would do well to consume our Bible in that same manner. I have a fellow that I like very much. I've heard him say many times, he says, read your Bible in the morning. Get up, get your coffee, read your Bible. No reading, no feeding. And what he meant by that, don't even eat your breakfast before reading your Bible. Read your Bible, reward yourself with the breakfast the Lord has provided for you. That's what he says. I like that. Now, I'll be quite honest with you. I'm not a morning person, so I don't always read my Bible in the morning. But you and I as Christians, we are called to consume this love letter that the Lord has given us. Truly, truly has. Amen goes there. We should consume His Word. His divine, His holy Word. The words inspired by God. I love this verse here. 2 Timothy 3.16. Who's got it memorized? All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instructions in righteousness. Well, you and I, we'd do well to take these instructions in righteousness to heart tonight. We truly would. All Scripture is given as profitable to us as Christians. Amen. We are to know and understand His Word. We are to know and understand His Word. Why is that important? Well, in John chapter 1, verse number 1, it tells us, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was, was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 4, verse number 14, it says, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Well, how are we going to hear from God if we're not consuming the book that He's already given us? It's going to be hard to, to spend the eternity with someone you don't know. You know what I'm saying? Think about it. How are you going to spend eternity with someone you don't know all that well? Well, you've got to get to know Him by keeping your face in the book here. Not the Facebook, the face in this book. This book here. The Bible, amen. Amen goes there. A Christian, we need to know Him intimately. The only way to really know Him is through His Word. Know His heart. Know his heart. Amen. You and I, whether we know it or not, or whether we understand it or not, we're truly in a battle on a daily basis. We're on a battle not only in our flesh. Because I'll tell you, my flesh is pretty lazy. I have to make it do things that God wants me to do. We're in a battle with this flesh. This flesh is dying. It's snowing. It's dying. It's lazy flesh. You and I have to watch out for that flesh. We truly do. We need to live victoriously by consuming God's Word. That's how we get victory over this flesh. This stuff that people get hung up in sin and they don't understand what sin is. If you and I are in the book and we understand God's mind, we know what God expects of us. We know what God says sin is. We agree on what He says sin is. We understand it. We understand it by consuming the book. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 17, it says, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Amen goes there. If you're going into battle, what do you need? You need a weapon. You need a sword. You need the sword of the Spirit. You need your Bible. We're in a daily battle. Your Bible is the only thing that's going to get you through. Not only is it going to protect you, it's going to help you defend yourself. Amen. Read it, live it, breathe it. Amen. Jesus is the bread of life. He's the holy word of life. We have the sword of the Spirit in our hands. We need to read this book like it's the only book God has ever written. Think about that. Do you read your Bible like it's the only book that God has ever written? Because it is the only book that God has ever written. You and I would do well to stay in the book. Amen. We really would. We need to read it, consume it in our lives because our lives depend on it. You think about that? Our lives truly depend on what God has written in this book. Our eternal salvation 
depends on what the Lord has written in this book. We need to take it to heart. Let us pray. Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for letting us speak tonight, Lord. Lord, I just ask, plead with you that these things that were said, Lord, to be profitable for you. Lord, I'm asking these scriptures not ever return void. You say that it won't, Lord, so let it be that this night, this scripture, these messages that were said, that would be something, Lord, that would help your people, Lord. I'm just so grateful for all the things that you do for us, Lord. These things we ask, Lord, in your Son, Jesus, most precious name. Amen. All right. What you got for me, brother? Two seven eight. Two seven. Uh oh. Two seven eight. Okay. Dyslexic's getting me. All right. Grab your hymnal if you would. Stand up with me. Let's sing a little bit of Jesus is calling. <laughs> 278. is tenderly calling thee home calling today call today why from the sunshine with love of the room further and further away calling today calling today Jesus is calling Thank you all for being here. All hearts and minds clear. Anybody got everything? Brother, would you dismiss us in prayer? Let's pray to Heavenly Father. What a blessing it is to be in your word today. Uh, what a blessing it has been for me and my family.